Welcome to today's Daily Walk in Wisdom. We're reaching the final chapters of Ecclesiastes, and it's been challenging. It's not an easy read. Uh, we've been motoring through it as we approach the end of necessity because uh, we need to get into Job, and then we need to look at uh, practical wisdom in Proverbs. And then we're going to finish the year off in the highest wisdom of all, which is romantic wisdom or uh, the wisdom of love. Uh, and that is reserved for the Song of Solomon. So with Psalms, along with Psalms, there's your five books of wisdom that God has given to us a pattern a blueprint whereby we might be able to bring our lives to a level of wisdom heretofore unattained within the world, something that is the sole rights and reservation of the sons of God and the daughters of God, but in the New Testament we're called all called the sons of God. Us men, we also have to live with being called the Bride of Christ, so it works both ways. Here we are in chapter uh, 11 of Ecclesiastes. Throughout this chapter, the teacher is providing us with a course for action, direction in our lives for periods of uncertainty. He speaks about being young and old and everything in between, phases where we're in transition, the uncertain times. We're all heading somewhere. Part of being human means that you are in motion and that you are going somewhere. So, so the problem with uncertainty is we don't know how we're going to get from here to where we're heading. It's during uncertain times that we need direction. And through direction we find assurance or certainty. It really is a lesson in faith. And, and throughout Ecclesiastes, that is what we are being given. We're being given a lesson in faith that in spite of the incongruities that surround us in the world, in spite of all of that, that we still believe that there is a God who watches sovereignly over all things and has everything in the palm of his hands. So verse 1, as we enter our lessons in faith, in chapter 11 of Ecclesiastes, verse 1 says, Cast your bread upon the waters, for after many days you will find it again. There are no returns without an investment. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Casting is not simply letting go. It is a deliberate action. Make your first investment in the kingdom of God, because he is the one who walks upon the waters that you're going to be casting your bread upon. Verse 2, give portions to seven, yes to eight, for you do not know what disaster shall come upon the earth. So he's giving us some sound investment advice here. Seven is the number of perfection. Eight is the number of new beginnings. So with seven investments, we secure our future. But with eight, you ensure a new beginning should all else fail. Verse 3, the very first part. If clouds are full of water, they pour rain upon the earth. So whatever you are full of, it shall pour out of you. Out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living water. And then the B part. Whether a tree falls to the south or to the north in the place where it falls, there it will lie. So make sure you're heading in the right direction because that is 
where you will remain. Fall into sin or fall into the arms of God. They are really your only choices in life. Verse 4. Whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. Don't wait for favorable circumstances to determine your sowing and reaping. The time in God is always now. Verse 5. As you don't know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. Everything God does is creative, and everything that he does is mystery, including the way that he works in your life. The man or woman of God learns to live in the mystery, because Jesus said the wind blows where it pleases. You hear its sound, but can't tell where it comes or from where it's going, or to where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And so, when you're in God's hands, your life becomes part of the mystery of God. And you're moving this way and that way, a little bit like the wind. Can't always tell where you're coming from or where you're going. But nevertheless, you are being motivated and moved in the direction that God is taking you. <coughs> Verse 6. <clears throat> Sow your seed in the morning. And at evening, don't let your hands be idle, for you don't know which will succeed, whether this or that, or whether both will do equally well. So sowing in the morning and sowing in the evening. If you're a sower, God will ensure that you will be a reaper. Verse 7. Light is sweet. It pleases the eye to see the sun. Did you know that light has a flavor? That's why you've got to taste and see that the Lord is good. However many years a man may live, let him enjoy them all. But let him remember the days of darkness, for they will be many. So it is our dark times that make the pleasant years enjoyable. You don't appreciate being healthy until you've been ill. You don't appreciate the joy of companionship unless you've been alone. He measures our darkness in days and our enjoyable times in years. He says, many years a man may live, let him enjoy them all, but let him remember the days of darkness. So darkness is measured in days, enjoyable times in years. So that is a description of our earthly life versus our eternal life. Earthly life measured in days, our eternal life. Well, it's like a day is to a year. Then it says in verse 9, Be happy, young man, while you're young, and let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. And follow the ways of your heart and whatever your eye sees, but know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. And don't be in a rush to grow old. Enjoy your youth while you've got it. Bring your heart and vision into line with God's judgment and you will build a life of substance. So then, verse 10 says, banish anxiety from your heart. And cast off the troubles of your body, for both youth and vigor are meaningless. So, first, he provides us with insight into the word meaningless. As youth is fleeting, so is everything else under the sun. And so when Solomon is talking about meaningless, meaningless, everything is meaningless, he's talking about the fleetingness of this earthly world that we inhabit. The fleetingness, it's here one minute and it's gone the next. Everything is like that. And, and so that's what he's describing. And, and 
then he says, banish anxiety from your heart and cast off your troubles. So youth is not a time for anxiety. It's not a time for depression. It's not a time for bodily consciousness or being a hypochondriac. Don't misspend your youth, but invest in it and you'll reap the rewards well into your old age. So there you have it. That's Ecclesiastes 11. Just Ecclesiastes 10 had 20 verses for us to go through. We just had 10 verses in this one. Think about it. In a world of uncertainty, there is nothing more certain than faith. Think about that. Faith is to believe what you do not see. And the reward of this faith is to see what you believe. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow where we shall wrap up the book of Ecclesiastes.